Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm Berkey. Nice to meet you. I think a few familiar names on the call. So today we're going to talk about boundary and boundaries feature of target aware workers and how, how that helps control specific access to specific workloads in a secure fashion. So I'm going to talk through a little bit about that, that today, some of the problem space that solves and how it simplifies the traditional bastion hosts and VPN access and also provides um, compliance for these particular workloads. And then I'm going to demonstrate that off with how it gets done. Even these are short and sharp. They, there'll be some assumed knowledge there but regarding this sort of technology, but uh, I'll, I'll guide you through a pretty worked outcome so you can understand how we solve this problem space. Um, any questions at all, as easy as it, just jump in and uh, put in the chat. And I'll keep an eye on this, this side of the screen. All right, so let's talk about target aware workers. So in this presentation, and I always get excited by these slides, I do am speaking over myself. We're going to talk about the overview and the challenges around this problem space. So technical context regarding boundaries architecture and how its architecture is somewhat uniquely positioned to enable this sort of functionality to ensure connectivity to specific workers, and then find those workers to ensure they get access to the specific end workload. And then we'll demonstrate that and we'll talk about some of the takeaways. So it's about boundary, right? I've been around long enough to know that if you want access to an environment and it's normally a pain in the rear, it requires I need to connect to a VPN or a bastion host that which has user requires network access, maybe certificates, maybe an Active Directory password. From that, that bastion host has a different type of DMZ access, access to specific services, access from specific services, but generally the bastion hosts are in the same network, have access to each other. So they are a pretty juicy target. From that access management allows me to get to different things and from like the DMZ zone, I might need to use 2FA to access an application with credentials, right? Usually the provisioning lifecycle of these VPN hosts or bastion hosts are part of an application stack, but generally have um, other way into these environments. Usually a user will have network access, the IP address listing for firewalls, brittle, maintaining the access and IAM identity around that is quite tricky. And then if that is all, um, if the worst of it all is that you have credentials exposed to applications. Right? So what Boundary seeks to solve is when we move from traditional static infrastructure that barely changes to moving and consuming public and private cloud in the notion of ephemeral workloads, things being spun up, torn down and moving with without being too fluffy, the rate of business, right, is that we need to have something that allows access in line with what we provision in structure. I can provision infrastructure via pipelines, infrastructure as code, and have application stacks stood up across various environments really quickly. But what about access to those based on identity? That's a bit of a trickier challenge to solve. And so what Boundary seeks to do is help with this shift for identity-based access with dynamic infrastructure. So HashiCorp Boundary is ground, it was built from the ground up around this challenge and problem space, right? I am an identity-based access exists, and it's not a new paradigm, but the way Boundary approach it here is that we want to have users authenticate based on a trusted identity provider, whatever identity provider that might be, GitLab, GitHub, Active Directory, AWS, you know, machine or human auth, right? Using Okta or whatever that may be. From there, be able to connect to a service registry of different applications and, and service catalogs. So if I'm Berkey and I'm a, a database admin, I get access to a database, but only to a database and not do everything around it, uh, around it, just that database. Or if I'm EZ and I'm in marketing, I might get access to a CloudFront and S3 bucket up by the latest collateral, right? But only those specific um, you know, services. And then providing that access with just in time. So if I need to seed credentials or seed permissions and access, we can inject a vault in the back end of the boundary to provide that there. So the idea is to simplify remote access and provide it securely based on who you are and what you intend to do. That's the site that branch the core around what boundary does, right? And that allows me to authenticate, nice little picture of animation. Thank you, marketing. It allows us to have that sort of end-to-end -end workflow. If I revocate a user, if I instantiate a user, the relevant access is granted or all removed. So what does that make a workflow look like if I'm taking boundary to solve some of these problems? Is that I can log in to boundary with an identity, trust identity, username, password, token, OIDC provider, whatever that may be. That is generally part of the HR onboarding process, right? So it's all happy happens by default. 
My authentication is based on roles and services. So if I have role one or role two, I will get access based on what role one or role two grants me. From that, the select service is provided or host and I connect, connect automatically. Where this simplifies the onboarding, I don't expose complex access lists or controls. The connection is brokered by a boundary. The network connectivity remains private. So I don't have a VM sitting on a network with like authoritative access to different networks on certain ports. It is brokered from the worker to the service. And then credentials aren't exposed because they're injected in the slipstream of, of boundary via Vault or other services. So that works out nicely, right? What we'll do today is the problem space, and oh, I'm due to speak ahead of myself because I get excited here, but some of the problem spaces around this is that we see that how do I be aware of targets and enforcement? So a bit of history here, if I'm a user and I authenticate to boundary, I authenticate to the control plane, to the controller. That, that will say, yes, this is Berkey. I've verified it by Active Directory that this is Berkey. You know, redirect, click yes, okay, happy days. This can be via CLI or via desktop. I've authenticated. From there, I get a list of services that I can authenticate to via CLI or API or, also, or, or desktop client of which I initiate as Berkey, a user to the worker, and that worker will target the system. It could be a database, it could be an Reddit system. And in this demonstration today, I'll show off that there. There are many controls and there are many workers in the architecture. And given the, the snapshot nature of this presentation, I won't go into the reference architecture, but when you have multiple workers, you may have workers in different regions, different enclaves, different network environments. Knowing some of the customer names on the call here today, you may have things in in premises, on premises, in different DMZs, based on different classifications of terrestrial networks. Right. Therefore, I want to ensure when I connect, and authenticate to the control plane, that when I request a service, let's say MySQL or Redis, that I uh, am passed to the correct worker who knows how to authenticate to Redis. There's no point authenticating to a worker that has no idea of the target service. Hence, target aware workers. The problem we're looking to solve here is to ensure the worker correctly authenticates, passes you to the right service, and he's aware of that given service at a time. And I'll show you how to administer that in a very straightforward fashion. I see some questions on the side, which I'll get to at the end. Thank you, Karthik, for jumping in. We look at our reference architecture, and I always love speaking over my slides. I think it's the second time I've done it today is that you can see there's multiple controllers here in this top middle part on the M for this native AWS architecture, but it could be on premises, right? And you can see here, based on the controller I connect to, I would hit a worker and go to the target instance. Here, I want to say that if I want to hit a specific target instance, it must be via a specific worker. So these have become target aware. So let's do a demo. I have this topology running on my laptop. So for context, I have a controller set up and two workers. Worker one is aware of Postgres and MySQL. Worker two is aware of Redis. Worker one is not aware of Redis and worker two is not aware of Postgres, right? That's what my diagram hopefully explain, shows that nicely here. Yeah. What I'm going to do is show you a demo that is going to fail, right? And this is expected to fail. And that's a big thing here is because I wanna show you what happens when we aren't target aware. So I'm gonna press escape. And I am going to bring up my environment here. So if, I'm just going to move a couple of things on my other screen here, and we're going to do this together. So I'm going to authenticate the boundary locally, right? And this is a more of an administrative function. This would normally be performed as something like a provision chair change via Terraform or, or that sort of thing. This infrastructure I've deployed today is via Terraform. So you will see uh, some Terraform changes occur. And I've restart a few processes. I do the changes. So I've authenticated. I want to connect to a Postgres instance. I don't know which work is that's behind. I just know that I have access to Postgres. So I'm going to connect to the Postgres instance in my database scope targets. And I'm going to connect. And I can see here I've copped an error. So which implies, based on my image in the previous slide, that I've connected to worker number two, which only is aware of Redis. So if I connect again a few times, it might take a few times to trigger, maybe back to worker one. It's going to make me test this out here is I will get to a point where it's pulled me back to worker one and it's aware of Postgres. So I type in Postgres and I get a valid database connection. So you can see there what's happening is that I've authenticated the controller and I've had an session affinity to worker two and it's not aware of Postgres. Now it's not a great user experience. You can see that that's occurred and that's been a bit of an issue. 
if I repeat this and try and access the, uh, the um, Redis service behind Worker 2, I got it incorrectly. It's not listening there, not happily listening, or we're hoping to find Redis, hopefully, behind Worker 2. It's going to prove me wrong, wrong today, but it, we can hopefully find it behind it. I'll get a Pong response back, and if I don't, that's fine. But you can see there I'm getting intimate connectivity. This is not target aware. This is not nice. So it would be nice to be able to do that. If I specifically call that out and I'm filtering, if I was filtering, I'd get a nice warning. So what I need to do is make these target aware. You can see here, I've tried to execute a specific MySQL command against the SQL database. And again, it's no workers are available to handle a session. I can see here that if I do a show database command securely via the, the worker to the database, it's not connecting me. It makes that nice connection from local host to the worker, to the worker to the SQL database. And it doesn't let me do it because there's no target. All right, so I need to change my target. So I'm going to open up VS Code and drag that across here. I can see here this is my uh, target aware demo that it's been created here. I'm going to go down to my workers and change the tags. You can see the worker filters is I'm going to say if I have a boundary target of a Postgres database and it's assigned to a scope and this is the default ports in the hosts, I want to ensure worker one is the filter, right? The name that worker I build. If I build a target for Redis, I want it to be if it's a region tag, if it's a Redis tag, whatever multiple tags that I have, it's going to filter on the region being US East 1, or it could be AP, AP South East 2. It could be on premises or DMZ. But I want to start putting logic on my workers to say when a connection comes in, based on the worker you are, these are your target pools. And I'm going to do the third one there and save that, which is not that one there. It's going to do that one there, bad filter. Remove that. After. And what I'm going to do here is then run uh, Terraform locally and do that there. So it's going to run locally and do that change for me and change those files, which is beautiful. It's going to change the configuration, which you can see there. It's changed a few of the tags, which is what we want to see. And what we're going to do is I'm going to restart my specific workers. So I'm going to issue a Docker command and restart those, which I'll do in a second. So I do Docker restart boundary worker 2.1 and Docker worker 1.1, which means the effect comparison takes effect. If this was a production system, you could uh, restart them one at a time at a scheduled uh, instance, or if it's on a K8 deployment, modifying that would schedule a point elsewhere. So there are ways to handle this in a, in a live scenario. So now if I'm looking at the SQL, connection again. I will go through and do um, my other commands. I'll do a rerun the Redis CLI, for example. I'm going to get a valid session. Why? Because I'm going to consistently get a valid session because I have pinned that target to a specific worker. I've authenticated the boundary. Worker 2 is aware of Redis. The tags say that the, that specific target must be accessed via Worker 2. And I'm consistently getting access, which is super. If I do this on a Postgres database, the same thing. I go back to Postgres, and I'm no longer getting that that throwback of the TCP errors I was getting before. That it was saying I had an outage, or sorry, connectivity issues. So those connectivity issues are gone, which means I have done that there. So you can think about some of the takeaways on this news. Things like compliance, things like control of my infrastructure. I can be consistent with this, which is great. And if I do the exec of my SQL, I didn't remove this one here. If I go and do the bad filter, right? I reapply that Terraform and I restart worker one. My SQL will work once that restarts and I rerun this. I should be getting a happier once it starts back up. There we go. So it's starting back up. But you can see there it's taken it there as opposed to not finding the specific thing. We will get that. I just restarted the worker. It's taking a few seconds to get there. But you can see there already, I'm no longer getting that, that worker uh, saying I can't reach it. That field's been cleared. You see how quickly you can change how you access targets. So with this ability to provide on-demand connectivity to those specific workers, I can say if I want to spin up a certain database group, a certain type of access to applications, I can do so very quickly. 
So that client with the boundary connects to workers. And then based on that, if I pull up a Redis, I'm going to work a two. If I pull up SQL or Postgres, I'm going to work a one. Now, if you think about your business, this could be application groups. This could be you know, workers one and 10 support that group or workers two and 20 support the other group to ensure you've got availability. But it also means I can guarantee where connections are coming from, where they're going to. So what are some of the takeaways here? So this provides us granular connectivity to provide enclave access to specific endpoints. So we can control which workers service requests by a controller to ensure the connectivity, provide consistent connectivity. Geolocation, if I have a global boundary deployment across my infrastructure on premises or in the cloud, I can ensure that specific workers in specific geos access specific targets. There's no point a worker in Japan servicing connections out to something in US East one or inside Europe, right? So you want to have geocentricity and compliance. There are sometimes there are regulations where we have where after authenticate to a, like a global control plane, compliance says any connection to an application must stay within in country or within certain networks or environments. This can help regulate flow and traffic to ensure that compliance, simplifying the complexity that you've done with the traditional bastion or edge internet access. So in summary, that's what Boundary Target Aware Workers can do. I'm Berkey, thank you for your session today. I'm just gonna answer a couple of questions that are in the Q&A and please jump in if you've got any more. Karthik Raj has asked, is this a cloud-based service or can it be implemented as on-premises? As of today, Karthik, it is a self-hosted offering. You absolutely can just go and deploy it now, get up and running. We have a reference architecture for GCP, for AWS, for vSphere, for Azure, just to go off and you know do it now. So you can run that there. It consists of that controller worker architecture and there's some Terraform like I used today to deploy mine to get up and running with that. Um, there may be things in the future which I can't really be discussed, obviously. So yes, so at this stage, it's a self-hosted solution, 100% open source. So go and enjoy that. You can get up and running with that today. Um, having using Boundary at home to access my infrastructure at home, I've turned, I don't need a VPN anymore. So my, my little Synology NAS has got turned off, which is nice for, for VPN at least anyway. <laughs> um, that looks like all the questions there today. Is there got anything else to say or are we, are we all good? I think we might be in the clear there. I think we are all good. Thanks for taking that question. Um, Karthik, I hope that answers your question as well. And thanks, Berkey, for the great presentation. I really enjoyed it as well.